Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. I was just getting ready to tear down this bench from my last video. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for taking the time and energy to like, subscribe, and comment on that video. Uh, it really did way more traffic in a very condensed period of time than I'm used to. And as somebody who works a full-time job, I had a real hard time uh, keeping up with everybody. But there were a couple of recurring comments that I wanted to address here, um, just to clarify. Um, you know, I'm still a small channel. I haven't been around for very long, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here as there's been a lot of new subscribers lately. So first and foremost, I don't provide scientific benchmarks, and I'm going to explain to you why in just a moment. This channel exists for me to share technology with you that I find interesting. I'm going to deliver you a guaranteed objective um, determination on whether a particular component is good or bad and why I feel that way. Normally you'll get some data, right? I want to at least be able to back up what I'm saying. I feel like that's important. That being said, these bigger channels that provide these in-depth uh, statistics and benchmarks on components have years and years of historical data and lots of time to get large sample sizes and do a lot of work that somebody like me, who literally works in a lab all day, simply doesn't have, right? Uh, and moreover, if I were to start doing things like measuring the decibel output of a CPU cooler or something like that, that data would still only be good in a vacuum, right? It's only good to compare against my other data. And the same goes for Gamers Nexus and Linus Tech Tips. Their data can only be compared to itself because there is no standard for testing PC parts on YouTube. It doesn't exist. Now that being said, I'd be happy to write one as somebody who has experience as an actual technical writer. I'd be happy to develop that standard, but the fact of the matter is, I've got what, 914 subscribers? Nobody's gonna adopt it. Now let's talk about this cooler a little bit. The number one comment that I got is that I mounted this backwards and it just kind of befuddled me a little bit because I'm like there is no backwards uh, this is a this is a symmetrical design it's not asymmetrical this isn't an offset mount or anything like that it doesn't matter which way I turn this 180 degrees either way it's still essentially facing the same way so there is no backwards uh, what I think some of you meant was that I placed the fans in the wrong spot. In fact, there was one commenter that did specify that I placed the fans in the wrong spot. So I just wanted to go ahead and address that real quick. Let me clip this fan back on just briefly. And I want to show you something. This is not an air restriction. Moreover, even if it was an air restriction, that's my whole screwdriver going down and touching the bottom of my test bench, okay? Even if it was an air restriction, we still have plenty of space back here at the bottom and in the sides okay so this is not a restriction at all um, the second thing I heard was that the test wasn't fair because of this restriction there are some outliers on both sides right there's those crappy 120 mil Alienware AIOs they're not so great and then we have these giant scythe um, towers that might be better than a, than a liquid cooler in some cases but generally speaking, any water cooler is going to outperform any air cooler, just as a generalization. The reason being is you have more thermal density due to the water, and water is actually better at dissipating heat than air. So let's talk a little bit more about fan placement here. If I did mount the fans the other way, the fact is I actually have less room over here, and this is a standard ATX motherboard. This is not a small board. It's not MATX, it's full size. All right, this cooler is huge. And the fact of the matter is I've got barely enough room, especially when I sit the graphics card all the way up, I've got barely enough room in here. In fact, there's just enough room and I'll tilt the camera a little bit over here. Whoop, let's see if we can get that. If you look down in here, you'll see there's just enough space for an NVMe drive and that's about it. So it actually would have made less sense because if this PCI plate, PCIe plate was here, you actually would have 
almost a air restriction if I put the fan over here. Okay, and as I'm getting finished up mounting everything here, I just wanted to clarify one more thing for you all. Um, there were two comments that mentioned that there are no coolers that are cheaper than this one that are as performant as this one here. And to that I have to disagree, so I wanted to give you all a couple of examples. First of all, the up here six pipe cooler, I haven't personally tested, but it is a dual tower cooler that's about $7 less than the uh, Thermal Right cooler that we have here. And then additionally, Thermal Right's own Peerless Assassin is usually five to six dollars cheaper than the Phantom Spirit 120. And I think that's basically because of the fans. Um, the Most of the Peerless Assassins or the cheaper Peerless Assassins, they don't come with any type of RGB on them. They're just like an all white fan or an all black fan. We're all set up here. I went ahead and rotated this 90 degrees. I do apologize for making that mistake. It was really just a matter of me being up till five o'clock in the morning, making that video on Saturday morning and then posting it without going to bed first. Um, it was just a uh, mental oversight on my part. I apologize. I thought for sure that I wouldn't be able to rotate the cooler, but in reality, uh, this cooler mount is symmetrical along with the cooler, so you absolutely can rotate it. Despite the fact that I still maintain that mounting it the way I mounted it did not cause a major air restriction, um, this is obviously the optimal configuration, so we're gonna go with that. All right, let's go ahead and get our GPU mounted up and do some tests. And just a quick reminder while things are getting booted up here, our test bench today is a Core i9-12900K on a Gigabyte Aorus Elite AX Z690 motherboard with 32 gigs of G-Skill DDR5-6000, all powered by the Corsair AX1200i power supply. Our GPU for today is a Zotac RTX 3070, and the drive we're working with is a Silicon Power A80 NVMe SSD. Let's go ahead and get into the tests. Now that we have the cooler saturated as far as heat is concerned, we're going to run the same test that we ran in the first video, but we're going to do it in this horizontal uh, orientation to see if the performance is any better. So let's go ahead and see how long it takes our 12900K to overcome the Phantom Spirit 120 SE. Just a reminder, in the first video, that cooler lasted for one minute and 13 seconds. All right, and off we go. CPU temperature is right down here, let's see. 75, 80, 91, 92. Man, it's almost like the fans can't quite spin up fast enough, but I've got them cranked up really high. Oh, there we go. It's holding at 94, 97, 98. Oh, there it goes. It's going to pop up to 100 any second here. Yep, and we're at 100C, and it's going to sit there and kind of wobble back and forth. Back down to 98. Mm. It went back down again. If we look down here, it looks like, oh yeah, we're definitely starting to thermal throttle a little bit. Still 5.1, 5.2 on the P cores isn't bad. We'll go ahead and stop it there. So yes, a very similar result to last time. Um, now I fast forwarded through the last test, but it, it did something very similar where it popped right up to 100 and then kept going back down. So I waited a little bit until the CPU frequency started to cut down a little bit and then stopped the test. So there you have it. In fact, holy smokes, what do you know? It's exactly one minute and 13 seconds. I don't think the orientation of the cooler really caused it to perform any worse. I don't think it would help matters to orientate the cooler this way. I'll admit that, right? Um, but it really didn't make that huge of a difference. Well, it looks like we're just about out of time for tonight. I have to call it quits as I have a job to be at in the morning, but be sure to stay tuned as we'll be posting a teardown of the Aqua Elite V3 all-in-one cooler tomorrow night. Once again, thank you so much for your feedback and the opportunity to rectify the situation with the first video. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.